Like I always say, welcome back to your favorite show on the land. Not so complicated. A show brought to you by the Innovation Consortium. Like I always say, a show that breaks down everything to a layman's understanding. And today we want to talk about Rise Up. You're here to find out what Rise Up is. And on the panel with me today, I have D Mama as usual. Uh, uh, we have Dan Walusimbi. <laughs> What does it Allow me laugh. I am Daniel what does it Daniel Walusi, what, what does it The only complicated man on the planet. <laughs> Steve, you know, as always, and jokes. And uh, my main guest today it's is twice. what does say himself. It's Daniel it's Walusi, it's Mbi. It's the self-proclaimed <laughs> FUFA president. And not self-proclaimed, the legitimate one. He has begun. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about Rise Up. And like I already said, please endeavor to follow us on all our social media handles. And today... I won't be in the interviewing seat. However, I will be in the hot seat. So that interviewers for today and the host for today is D Mama and Duke of Steven. So please take over, guys. Brush me up. <laughs> First of all, as we came from to our. Taxon. So, what is rise up? Cut. So, <laughs> As you said, I am your host today. I'm not the lion, I'm the god. I'm the <laughs> so, what is Rise Up? Hello, guys. <laughs> guys, the whole city is not easy. I'm already sweating. So, Rise Up is a, a refugee innovation and sustainable urban project. Oh. Yes. I no. Ah! <laughs> Come on, Refugee innovation and sustainable enterprise urban, urban project. project. Run it up. Former hosts, what is Rise Up? Rise Up is a, it's a definition of a couple of words, uh, meaning re refugee innovation and sustainable enterprise urban project. Meaning that Rise Up is a project that we brought up for the urban refugees. So it's six words. In the slums of Uganda, yes, yeah, six words. Refugee. You said couple of words. I said, couple, <laughs> I said a couple of words, yes. Couples, two, 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 making it six. Of course, um, you know, Rise Up, so that is Refugee couples. Innovation and Sustainable and Enterprise Urban Project. Project. So okay. it's three couples. Yeah, three couples, two, two, okay, two, three two. couples, exactly, yes. yes. And that's your part. Do you emphasize urban? Yes, urban, uh, you know, because it is. Uh, uh, targeting the urban setting. Okay, tell okay, us. If I Where mean, did he? I'm the host. I'm the host. I may not be a lion, but I'm the host. <laughs> okay, okay. Let, so, let, let me. Let, okay, <laughs> politely, let mm -hmm. me talk about uh, the word urban. Mm. You said why urban was because uh, we realized that almost all the organizations, uh, all the charity organizations, and uh, all the other organizations are uh, emphasized and focus much more on the refugees in camps. If you uh, look at it, usually when we have, uh, say, on TVs, interviews about refugees, anything about the refugees... Let me use they, your own words. No, the As refugee you policy. said before, mm. uh, you, let me interject politely. Uh, you are main guest today. So you say. What I say. So, what is Rise Up? What, uh, where, where did the inspiration that is Rise Up come from? Actually, under the Innovation Consortium, mm. you all know that we have uh, a project called Tuyiye. Like you hear the word to ye to get to college, to ye ye. Mm. Let, pe let make people think. And under uh, to ye ye, uh, the aim is to make sure that uh, we encourage open and forward thinking attitudes in uh, youths and maybe the marginalized groups. Mm. So, and one of them it was the, um, the yeah. slums. So, in that, when we went to the slums, and uh, when we made our survey in the slums, we saw indeed that we needed our services. So what we did, we came up with a project called Ye Slum Challenge. And in Ye Slum Challenge, the main objective of that uh, uh, program, Ye Slum Challenge, was to try to improve the livelihoods of the people who are living in uh, slums by equipping them with the necessary skills and also knowledge to make sure that they can deal with their day-to-day -to -day challenges. So as we were in the slums, we faced another challenge when we were executing the Yi Yaslam challenge. We came to we came in, in, in face to face with so many refugees. So the challenge was we found out that uh, there were so many refugees who were living in the what? Slums. In the slums. So now when we went and made our investigative investigative survey, 
we found out that the the refugee policy was not covering the the urban refugees like like the way we, we usually do it we got that challenge we brought it back to the innovation consortium and you remember what well, guys you are part of that uh, um, mastermind Bra group so you brought it back to you around what time was that that was 2018 as in at least in, in, in January, yes, 2018. So we brought the challenge back to the panel as usual, like the way we do it. We created the, um, we created the, the mastermind group. We deliberated, and uh, I remember he was the one in, in the lead of coming up with the with the best solution that we could give the urban refugees. As so. usual. <laughs> but today I'm the host. So that's <laughs> not so then, in that regard, yes. what did Stephen do? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. I remember he hosted the... the, yeah. the, the we had some camps there in Makere. The innovation. Hey, we are here to get to that. Yes. But so before we get to that... Do I need to tell you now? No. <laughs> are, you, <laughs> are you tell us more? Okay. So, Show us a link between the two years for a layman. So the two year, the two year and the rise up. Remember after the, our deliberations mm. from the mastermind group of the innovation consortium, it is the one which brought up the rise up. Rise up that is refugee innovation and sustainable <laughs> enterprise <laughs> urban project. Again, <laughs> so how long did you run I you to you to you It's okay. No, guys, as like from our from our deliberations from the from the mastermind group of the innovation consortium, when we brought that challenge, this is what gave birth to rise up. That is. Uh, uh, refugee, innovation, innovation and sustainable, and sustainable enterprise, enterprise urban, urban project, project which, uh, which was meant to provide an eco, uh, a collaborative ecosystem that would enable refugees to be creative, innovative, enterprising and successful. While we were integrating them into, uh, the, in, into our country as uh, productive actors, Question. Okay. How many refugees did you skill and then what skills did you they learn? How many for how starters, many refugees were part of that? Group? Yes, for starters, we engaged so many. Mm. Because actually we gave them uh, like um, in the previous we gave them uh, leadership skills so that they can have a sense of uh, meaning in life. Then afterwards in the in the apprenticeship program, we had because of the funds we had to settle to a hundred urban refugees, uh, with uh, sixty percent women and forty percent men. Why women? Huh? Why women? Because we believed in our investigative survey we did, we saw that uh, women were more vulnerable than men in the urban uh, setting, and there were so many single mothers that were in the in, in the in the slums. Maybe if I may ask the lion here uh, about the funding, say because of the funding, who who are your partners in this project? Okay, and uh, before I even get to that point, allow me first get back to the sixty percent women. Uh, you know, like he told you, from two years we want to rise up, and it was the first project the Innovation Consortium ever did uh, to do with refugees. Yeah. So most of the organizations that we partnered with, you know, to get to the refugees, yeah. uh, even in their registers and register, we, we, we would find that they, they were having women, more women than men. And even women were even easily approachable <laughs> than men. And more so, even in the setting of the women emancipation and all that, so they usually take that percentage you know, they usually... Or you find you the, the them most, more, yeah, they're more the, approachable. They're the most vulnerable. <laughs> I'm about to come to that. And our, if we talk about our partners, we partner with our lot, lots of our organizations. Uh, and uh, You can list them up for key, our listeners. Yes, and, and key the being key uh, the French Embassy, which gave us, uh, I must say, our 80% of the which, funding of the project. Wait, which French Embassy? The Kenyan French Embassy? <laughs> the, the Ugandan, uh, Ugandan, okay. From Kubia Line. That's a Ugandan French embassy. Okay. That, uh, uh, yeah. uh, you know these the, 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 the French uh, embassy actually. Okay. Uh, the French embassy, Ugandan French embassy, was the main funder of the project. You know why? Because 
they come up with a call. They usually have calls every year. So when they brought up a call, we wrote uh, a, propo a proposal, like he said, basing on three years, slam challenge. It, so we tailored, tell us about yeah, we more. tailored it to, yeah, to, to the call. So, now, yeah, tell so us. we are the main funders. Okay. So we had the French Embassy. The Ugandan French oh, Embassy. Yeah, Ugandan French Embassy on that. We had uh, the uh, Rot Rotary Club Which of Uganda. Club, yeah, huh? Rotary Club of Uganda. Okay. Uh, to be specific, the Rotary Club of Chambogo East. Okay. Yes. Uh, we had, uh, of course, uh, our father, Innovation Consortium, the main company on there. Mm. Uh, we had to year itself. Okay. Because it's from today that we get rise up. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think those were the. Uh, we had, we had, uh, and we dealt with some uh, refugee-led uh, organizations uh, in in, uh, in in urban setting. Mm. <laughs> no, no, maybe <laughs> maybe to put a hint in there. Uh, we also had the Media Challenge uh, Initiative, uh, with MCI, which actually uh, helped us, you know, train you know the refugees into the media sector, uh, TV and radio presentation and all that. So those were our main, you know, partners. Thank you. Which bring me to a question I asked. Mm. The skills mm. you told these refugees. Mm. Because I think that's where... Yeah, for today's show, we won't go too much into how you chose mm. who to study what, who to do what, because I right. know there was a study mm. about all that. Yeah. But uh, probably if you can give us a brief of about yeah. the range of skills. Like what, did you, what did you teach these people? Did Steven teach them anything? Like it was exactly, because he was also part of the project. Yes, so Steven. Steven. Tell us, what did you no, do? <laughs> did you interact with the What did you is? teach? Well, um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Everyone is eager to understand exactly the magic I did with the, <laughs> in the project. Um, but, um, <laughs> go on. <laughs> go on Anyways, um, so basically, um, I was uh, heading a, a team from the Innovation Consortium that was in charge of the Innovation Camps. Um, innovation Camps were a series of exercises that were supposed to help these people be more innovative around the environment. So basically we focused on about three fields, which was um, self-awareness and motivation to basically, you know, uh, most times uh, refugees, when, you know, when you get to a new area, you have kind of an inferior, infer inferiority complex that you need to overcome in order to be able to push forward. So basically, we had uh, this gentleman here bringing up his dream book and motivational talks. You know, he's the guy who trusts these things of, uh, I started with a feather to do this. But anyways, yeah, he started his restaurant with the school. So yeah, we had uh, those kinds of talks um, at the beginning. Then we had uh, things encouraging innovation, mm -hmm. uh, looking around your environment and seeing what you can do with the skills you have, with the materials you have mm -hmm. to produce. Uh, opportunity awareness. Okay. Yes, to produce opportunities that can create wealth and money. And then we, at the end, went on to show them about execution. So we have exercises that were supposed to show people how to achieve what you have uh, been able to look out for. Yes, so in a brief was, was yeah, Sorry to interrupt. It's okay. Back to those two gem. Any practical skills like you pick no, anyone? No, actually, when you hear the word, uh, yes, when you hear the word uh, rise up as in innovation and sustainable enterprise I urban project. I think it's, it's wow. much better when it comes to that. So, for you to be sustainable, we have to make sure that at least we, we give them some practical skills, like we have said. So, we set up uh, an apprenticeship program. And that apprenticeship program, we because there were so many, mm. but like I That's said, you know, thing. yes, about our capacity to execute, um, we chose a hundred of them yeah. that were supposed to be taken through that uh, apprenticeship program. And in and under apprenticeship program, we had different uh, skill sets that were being headed by uh, by the innovation consortium, and uh, we had people who were taken through driving, fashion and design. Um, hairdressing, hair yes. bakery, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and hair by refugees. True. There was welding and publication. Yes, there was welding and publication. There was media. Uh, we partnered with uh, Media Challenge Initiative yeah, because we, be, we believe that. that was uh, journalism. No, the yes, the yes. Actually, the, actually, the gentleman them. behind mm -hmm. the, this uh, production is one of them, yes. and yeah, and uh, uh, and because we believe that. Uh, you know, the narrative or the storytelling of refugees, it was more in a, in a negative way. 
and we believe that actually they have so much to offer and wanted to to have a different way of telling the stories of journalism. I can, and, and I can, I can tell you here. a proverb. No, the story me. of the hand will always glorify the hand <laughs> because lions don't have their own historians. Exactly. So. If I can also interject in there. Yeah, yes. Not Brian Lyon, but other lions. <laughs> the, story, <laughs> the story of uh, the refugees mm. and their contributions, mm. I believe, for, for the record, some mm. of the greatest achievements and... Uh, in very many fields have been under have been done by refugees. For example, uh, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Yes. The man, for those of you who are familiar with E is equal to M C square. The greatest the, mind the, of our the generation. The idea, the greatest mind of our time. Yes. Was a refugee. So basically, you're saying if we became refugees, would be would no, be no, better. no. <laughs> refugees are capable of even more than what than how vulnerable people see them to be. Mm -hmm. Because the list goes on. There's glorious most, most no, no, no. To, to, to emphasize on that, I hear that uh, the person who is the president of this country, he was also once a refugee. There are many African in, presidents in, in, have in, been refugees. refugees. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, it's so a, you are still telling us. Environment. <laughs> so you can also become a refugee. Yes, anytime. Yes, the bombs are going off. It's possible. <laughs> Can be a I could already be become one. a refugee and become a leader. Okay, so <laughs> you man, tell us more. So the skills, mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, we, uh, you've told us about the different skill sets that they learned. And doctor, okay, you need to understand how did you come up with those uh, as in different uh, skill sets that we were supposed to give the the, the refugees. You know, before that, we did uh, market survey to make sure that uh, we got uh, a market analysis of the products or the skills that we would give and the accessibility or maybe the value chain of the skills that we were giving them. So we made a market survey and from, it's from the market survey that we came up with these skill sets. And also to pick out the people who were supposed to be taken through these skill sets, we, are, we, we went through a, is it a needs assessment uh, program. That is from that needs assessment program where we got uh, the refugees and their data, the people who are so much interested in those uh, areas where the market survey pointed to, they are the people who are being uh, invited into the program. And that's how we came to, to get there. Okay, Daniel. So, you sourced out, yes. you got the people, you, uh, you taught them very many skills. We what told them. Exactly. Yes. We told yes. them. Yes. So, if I may ask Brad Lyon. Yes, please. So far you've told us uh, about one success story. Mm -hmm. Could you just cite only two more success, success stories? Because, because, because the one you've only told us is uh, our dear videographer. The guy right behind now. the camera. Yes, the yes. guy behind. The guy being your this. Yes. Yes. So, do you have any other, give us any other two success stories? Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, two, two really. Uh, two, two is just. Uh, what about Popsi? Two, two, two. You can just choose two. Two is a small number. Um, we have very many success success stories. We have uh, uh, Rasta, uh, Chico, who uh, took on who took, took on welding and fabrication. Okay. He actually now started up a small workshop with uh, his other friend. Where's the workshop? Uh, here in Buto Boyo okay. Yes, yes. And so that was old. an apprentice of so what? Yes, we have uh, uh, Rosine, who uh, now has, uh, I think, uh, one of the top ta tailoring shops in Zambia. Uh, she knits. She's a, ta ta a tailor. Oh. Yes, Daniel, Brian, and colleagues. Uh, from what I've got, and uh, I believe this uh, project was a success. Because I believe we have the huge success. Yes. So tell us about the. Uh, challenges you found in So among the challenges we found, it was about the language barrier. We went there, you know, because they are coming from different uh, uh, countries and different walks of life, they were speaking different languages. So that is one thing that uh, we found and we needed to get uh, interpreters. And also they had another challenge we got, they had trust issues. As, uh, like every mm -hmm. up that was one of the main actions. No, it's challenges. one of the things that they had. And mm -hmm. thirdly, maybe about the cost of running the project, because along the way we found so many other things that were very important that would help them really live a sustainable life. And we could not leave them out 
Like for example, the Media Challenge Initiative. We went ahead even to go into a media expo. You remember where they competed with the university students and they were given, a, they got an award from that participation. So there were so many other things that came up that we thought that they really needed them if we wanted to have a sustainable project. So among the few, so those are some of the things. Finances, we wanted to even to get more people. Actually, by the way, it's still on. We are looking for, and we are still doing even more uh, apprenticeship programs, even up to now. But and but we are calling on other other partners, partners or potential mm -hmm. sponsors to come on board so that we can make a difference. Okay, so if I uh, what, huh? what's what's next for Riza? Is it going to stay? Urban Is it all? Yes. Now, interesting. This project has encompassed both. Because the refugees are supposed to be, you know, they want to integrate them in the host community. So for you to be able to carry out things, uh, you know, successfully, we need to integrate both of them. So actually there are some uh, Ugandans who are part of the project. So it is intended to make, because we want to integrate them into society, so it is better not to just isolate them. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to, 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 to accessing jobs, or as in employment opportunities, it is still the Ugandans which are going to, to employ them. So there is that part that uh, we integrated with uh, the host community, and uh, I think it was very successful. And actually many of them even have learned the, the Ugandan language, so that they can communicate. Would like to, there's, a, there's something we missed in the discussion, mm -hmm. keep saying host community. Where did you, because uh, which, which geographical region may be? Actually, we centered so much in the, in the Kampala slums in the okay. first place. And that's where actually uh, Kabaragala, Nsambia, Odi Kampala, Kisenyi, um, Kamuocha, those are the areas where we centered in the first place for this uh, uh, pilot project, the first pilot project, but we are still continuing. But on the other hand, my colleague asked whether, as in we are only going to, 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 to settle you know, only in, in, in urban refugees. No, first, the challenge was, the challenge we got, you remember, it was that we found that there were so many urban refugees and, 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 and we found out that uh, the refugee policy does not cater for them. So we came in to, to, to try to, to, to bridge that gap. But secondly, that took us further into knowing more about refugees. And actually, there are so many other projects that are coming up to make sure that we help our urban refugees. Urban refugees and those ones even in camps. Okay, then Daniel, uh, from what you've told us, seems mm -hmm. the project was a very good success. So, uh, are you still in touch? Is the project still in touch with uh, your former benefactors? Very much alive. And actually, testimony, one of them is here as in uh, doing the same work that he started. Like we have said, the others also have started up some businesses. And we also go, we follow up them. And we also have a group where anybody, when he has a problem, he communicates into the group. And even we have went ahead to create a Rotaract club for the refugees to make sure that we keep them together. And also as we are bringing other people on board. So we are very much in touch. And uh, actually we have been inspired by the success we have achieved. And we hope this is just the beginning. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. uh, on uh, maybe emphasizing on the Rotaract Club, it is uh, uh, it was the first ever, and still is the, the first ever Rotaract Club, uh, the refugee-based Rotaract Club in Uganda and East Africa as a whole. And um, if I may uh, knock on the other point of uh, is the project going to help Ugandans? Uh, let's bring it to uh, the COVID-19, which has taken us two years down the road. And remember, some of the you know pupils won't be able to go back to school. So, and remember, this initiative rise up is more so of uh, impact, imparting skills into the people. It's more of uh, practical skills. So we think those that you know won't be able to go back to school because of poverty or other related issues, 
uh, you know, if we brought rise up onto the national the Ugandans, and we are, you know, already writing that, trying to restructure rise up to the nationals, those that won't be able to go back to school, and there are very many, you know, rise up can take them on, and you know, we can, you know, change our communities. Thank you. Okay, yes, a brain lamb, from all you've said, I've actually picked a lot, and uh, I'm thinking we now I'm speaking as consultant because as also part of this project, project yeah, sure. it would be unfair for me to mm. tell you I, I, I didn't do anything to this project. Yes. Actually, part of the criteria as they taught these refugees, one of them took a particular liking into solar energy. As actually his, I was his tutor, and mm. uh, he's really doing very well. Yes. For confidentiality, probably, I won't use names, but for those who want to follow up the files, we have the files. Mm -hmm. We can tell you more, there's still more, we can't finish, we can't empty what this project was, but uh, the benefits are beyond what uh, you can imagine. But the sad part is, however good the benefits were, I saw we were only able to impact a very small fraction of the people that need this service, that need this apprenticeship, that need this engagement. Because of the limitations we have ideally, you know, finance and the rest. But uh, we look forward to doing the better we can, or the yeah. best we can. Yeah. So from all of us, if anyone can say, everyone can give a parting chat something, we'll start with you. Yes. Um, <laughs> I like that. I don't know if people know that uh, Uganda has the highest number of refugees in Africa. African continent. Yeah. That means we are already a friendly country, and probably we are people that are approachable because you don't run where it's not approachable. So, with the proper connections, because we're not just looking for finance, we're looking for even for partnerships. Probably you can teach these people something that we, that is out of our innovation consultant system. Out of our reach. Otherwise, reach out, tell us how we can help and probably how you can also help us push this further. I've been your host, David <laughs> Dagot. I'm not the lion. So, back to the lion. Thank you so much, our viewers, you know, for being with us. And uh, yeah, we're glad to have you. I would like to say that uh, there's a gentleman called Sami Watera who works on NTV, The Beat. Uh, he hosts the show with uh, Dougie Nice, I think. And uh, he works on Radio City. And that gentleman was with us. He's a refugee with us, and he went to MCI, where he learned the Media Challenge Initiative, where, where he learned uh, radio media. presenting and TV mm -hmm. media. As a product of Rise Up. Uh, all I'm trying to say is that uh, Muhammad Salah himself was, was a refugee and the president of Uganda and other presidents. All I'm trying to say is that uh, refugees are human beings, and most or even you know, all of them have brains that are even much better than the people that we praise up in here. So please uh, come on board. Let's develop something bigger than Rise Up. Let's impart on more than a hundred refugees, and we can change this world together. <coughs> Over to you, Kasiye Guam. Wadase himself. Uh, thank you for this uh, great opportunity. All I would want to say that uh, we need to encourage ourselves at least to try to make a difference, even if it is one life. It really, it is priceless. And uh, I know refugees, just because of uh, so many uh, different reasons, one way or the other, they found themselves here. But you may find that those people had a normal life before they became refugees. And even others had, uh, uh, they were in uh, bigger positions. And they had uh, natural gifts and talents that uh, could make a difference. Like he said, I would want to emphasize, like Albert Einstein, the greatest mind of our generation, you hear that he was a refugee. But he made a difference. So what I'm trying to say, please, these are our brothers. Today, and maybe sisters. they are refugees tomorrow. And sisters, indeed. But I'm not a feminist. So. <laughs> so, please, treat them kindly. And uh, you never know. Like I said, there are so many of them who have um, uh, gifts and talents. Let's try to come, give them uh, a friendly environment so that they can also make a difference in our own country. Thank you. All I have to say is uh, all, vulnerable people, all vulnerable people 
um, given the same opportunities, could actually do the same or more. And I mean, you walk along the streets of Kampala and look at a street child and you never know. What if that's the guy who has the cure for cancer? What if he was meant to be? So everyone should be supported to gain their full potential. Let's help out where we can. Thank you. And to wrap things up, uh, to me, the greatest refugee is Superman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're from crypto. Oh, the refugee from crypto. And he's saving our planet. <laughs> but Uganda, you're not in metropolis. So you're okay. <laughs> okay. But, but seriously, uh, some, some great things are done by humanity. And remember, these borders were formed by human beings. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's an imaginary line that exists between humanity that says I'm Ugandan, I'm Randis or anything. So let's work together. We shall run testimonies of some of these refugees for our listeners and viewers to see after the show. Thank you.